So this will be the last video where now we are going to focus on the discussion of two frameworks that are very relevant. These two frameworks come from the strategic management approach that remember, it focuses on understanding the gap between the strategy and the structure. And not only that, but also how it, it, it is possible that with management control, we are able to balance that gap and then maybe find mechanisms that help maybe get closer to the strategy we are pursuing and the uh, structure that we have in our in our company. So this levers of control approach has been very uh, successfully uh, applied in theory and practice. Actually, I think you I ask you to read this article that is not a scientific article in itself. It's more like a practitioner article from Harvard Harvard Business Review. So it is a kind of very practical framework, but at the same time, uh, it is it has been used a lot in research. So it's I think it's a good balance between being relevant in practice and in uh, in the academic world. So the idea of of these levers of control is that we usually assume that the implementation of uh, management control was done because there was supposed to be um, some efficiency, there was supposed to be some better performance uh, overall in the company. But this, uh, this framework argues that sometimes it's not important to have uh, an overall performance increase in order to implement and practice management control. It can be a specific increase or a specific benefit. And at that time in 1994, that was quite new because right now we are aware of that. Like maybe we want to invest in something and that doesn't mean that we have to improve the whole organization. We can improve a process or we can improve uh, like the structure for research and development or we can improve different things. And and that is that is valid. But sometimes ago, that was not the case. We didn't see it like that. And then we also have another, that's that's one of the innovations from the levers of control framework. And the other innovation is that it says that control mechanisms are interdependent. Like if you decide to uh, implement a budget, it will have an influence or an effect in another area, not only in finance and the other way around. Like if you implement controls for customer control, for example, it will also affect finance and not only the customer. So these two things are kind of the basis for the levers of control framework. The idea that it is a good idea to implement control as long as there is a performance, it can be very specific, not so broad and the second and super important that there is interdependency between the controls if you focus on financial control that doesn't mean that it will only affect finance it kind of will have effect on other aspects like uh, customers or like employee satisfaction different things that we also want to control so the framework on itself looks like this maybe you already know it because maybe you read the paper but uh, it it has four it it has four levels of control that are belief systems, boundary systems, diagnostic control, and interactive controls. Or we can also call it interactive systems in diagnostic systems. It, I mean, like, there are different ways to call it. But the thing is that uh, in practice, companies will use a combination of all of this to pursue the strategy. A combi combination of these four aspects will help you to achieve that kind of closing the gap between your structure and the and your strategy that you are pursuing. So let me explain you quickly what are these systems or control about. First, the, the boundary system, maybe I like to start in there because the boundary system tells you where you don't want to go. So for example, if I am pursuing a, a strategy that focuses on high quality, then I don't want to go to quick manufacturing to to like mass manufacturing because not, that is not my my goal. So in the boundary system, you will have limitations on that. Like you will have the, the controls that I don't want to go there. So it's a boundary system where you don't want to go. In contrast to that, we have the belief system and the belief system is trying to kind of try to push the vision and the mission of the company through controls. So for example, maybe you can, if you are pursuing like a lot of innovation in your company, maybe you can include some controls for your employees or your departments where you include like a 
minimum level of new ideas or certain number of patents per year because that is what you believe on you believe on innovation so this is kind of that type of control to push the belief systems and as you can see these two are kind of a high level like at a macro level what in general we don't want to do and what we want to do and these two are more specific the diagnostic controls and the interactive controls and here in the diagnostic control the diagnostic control are the typical management control mechanisms that maybe you know the budgets the cost control all of these things that are more like yes or no like uh, we need to achieve this level of um, efficiency we need to achieve this level of profitability all of these things are called diagnostic control they they diagnose the health of the company they tell you based on on the past what how are you behaving? The budget is the same. Usually budgets are based from the past performance and then named to, to, to lead for a certain outcome. But the contrary to diagnostic controls, diagnostic controls are based on the past, are interactive controls, controls that require a lot of interaction, a lot of action, not only to see, okay, we did it like this, that's the past, a calculation from the past, interactive controls are like, okay, so this is what's happening, what's the next step? Typical idea of an interactive control is the balance scorecard because the balance scorecard will tell you how well you're doing or bad you're doing in certain aspects, but it requires immediate action. Contrary to this, in the profitability controls or efficiency controls, it's mostly like, ah, we did this, we did that, that is what we, that's our goal, we achieve it or not. But in the interactive control, even though that you couldn't achieve your objectives, there is uh, immediate action. It, it, it looks more towards the future. So the idea of the levers of control is that uh, depending on how you balance, how much um, pressure or how much weight you put in each of the levers, you will get different outcomes that will get you closer or further from your strategy goals. So we will discuss much more about levers of control in the seminars and in the and in other lectures, but that is more or less what, what, what it is about. And this is a very good idea, or this is a very good framework to use in your dissertation. It's a bit old, so again, you'll have to find a good problem because there is a lot of research on this, but uh, but it's like very doable. It, like it's even practitioners identify these concepts, sometimes like with the post-structural approach, practitioners don't understand <laughs> what you are asking when you are doing interviews, for example. So it in the positive side is that it's more doable, but the negative side is that it will require a lot of thinking to find a problem because there is a lot of research on that. Uh, you can be criticized of using a very old framework, but we can we can work on that. But it's a good suggestion. I think you can you can think about it. But then we also have a, a more complex view that is a bit similar to this, but it's. It's also kind of uh, uh, a little bit more complex than the uh, levers of control, which is management control as a package. And I think you also read this paper, the Malmi and Brown paper from 2008. So in in here, uh, the, the there are two assumptions that are critical in this framework. First, that it distinguishes management control from an information uh, uh, system. Like it doesn't give you information only to be management control. It also re requires action. So in management control as a package, it's not possible to have only uh, feedback tools or feedback mechanisms. In management control as a package, you also need to act and you will also need to um to it, it also gives you like decision making power we will discuss that and and the other thing that is maybe a little bit related to the levers of control because we assume this interdependency between the levers of control is that in the management control uh, as a package it's even more it's even clearer in here it's very very transparent like it, they argue that the system works as a system it cannot work isolated like i mean simon's talk about it they say like it's a combination of all of these things but 
in main in a lot of research from here there is also like if they can focus on one of them like if we in, in, increase more this what what happens in the management control system as a package that that could not be the case you cannot really focus on one aspect they claim that if you want to see management control from their view from as a package you need to elaborate on every aspect of that package so now this is how it looks like it i see it as a sandwich where you have it has five main concepts in the other one we had four but here we have five on top we have cultural controls which is maybe related to the belief systems like it's like what do we value what do we care what do we pursue at a very high level then at the bottom of the sandwich we have the administrative controls which is mostly like the structure that the company has so again remember this is from the strategic management approach so they do assume as a structure so there is structure that is kind of given fixed we have this structure we have this many desks and computers what can we do with it so culture on top administrative controls at the bottom and then in the middle of the sandwich we have first the planning which is the control mechanisms that help the company to plan long plan or short term plan then we have cybernetic controls, which is the core of management control. And here you have the typical ones like budgets or financial measures, but also non-financial measures, like we say, like customer satisfaction, employee satisfaction, all of these things. And finally, we finish with rewards and compensation. So the idea of using the this framework in your dissertation or in a research is maybe, for example, to understand if a uh, if we if, if a company is shifting towards a different strategy, how all of these things should adapt to that? Or the opposite. Like if can they push a strategy through a change in here? Can they instead of trying to reach the strategy, can they do the opposite? Like if I change controls, can I change the strategy instead of the other thing? Another possibility could be to maybe identify uh, something that they are missing, like maybe there is something more around here, like maybe maybe uh, they, they did not consider. So there are many possibilities in the management control system as a package framework that you can pursue in your dissertation. But I think so far we are done with the lecture uh, for today, where we learn about first kind of a historical evolution of management control. And then we stopped in the at the beginning of the 1900s because that's where the kind of theoretical academic um, development started. And then we started from economics, we moved to agency theory, contingency theory, strategic management theories. Then we moved to institutional theory, post-structuralism, and then critical theories. So I think you got a good overview of how the, the literature has emerged. And as I said, Contingency and strategic management are very important right now. So that's why we spend some time learning about these two frameworks, levers of control and, and management control system as a package. So that's all for today's lecture.